I'm Kate Brown, Oregon's Secretary of State. Part of my job is to make voting more convenient and accessible for all eligible Oregonians. So today, I want to talk with you about National Voter Registration Day. We're partnering with organizations from all over the country to get people registered to vote. In Oregon, you can register to vote when you're 17 years old. So even if you turn 18 on Election Day, you will automatically receive your ballot in the mail. It's really easy to vote, and our vote by mail system is the most secure and transparent system in the country. Time is running out. You must be registered 21 days before the election day, which is in November. So if you're 17 years or older, please consider filling out a voter registration card. It's really easy. You have to declare that you're a citizen of the United States and that you're at least 17 years old. If you can answer yes to both of these questions, move ahead. Fill in your name, address, and birthday. If you have a driver's license number, you'll need to provide that. And if you don't, just fill in the last four digits of your social security number. Then if you want, choose a political party to affiliate with, but you don't have to. Finally, sign your name. That's it. You're registered to vote in Oregon. Alternatively, you can always register online using our My Vote system. Just have your ID card with you and you're good to go. Once you turn 18, you will get your ballot sent to the address you provided. Just fill out the ballot and send it back. In November, Oregonians will be voting on some very important ballot measures that affect your rights. We'll also be deciding who will be our representatives in both state and federal government. If you don't vote, someone else is going to make these important decisions for you about your rights and your representatives. So it's important that younger people are heard. Go ahead and get registered. Your vote is your voice, and every voice matters. Hello, I'm Perez Hilton. Did you know that more people in the United States check their Facebook and watch the Super Bowl than exercise their right to vote? We've got some serious issues to deal with. So how come so many of us don't even bother to vote? Is it because we don't care? Or maybe it's because we don't know our history. So let's go back, way back. Our country's first election came after fighting for our independence, a fight that cost many lives, but it was worth it because instead of being ruled by a king, we were finally able to make our own laws. But not everybody was allowed to participate. You see, back then, you had to own property, be white, and a man in order to actually vote. Now, things continued that way for about 80 years, until after the Civil War, when slavery was abolished and all men were given the right to vote. Now hold up a minute. Just because we had the right to vote didn't mean we could use it. See, all these new voters wanted to participate, which threatened the people in power and their ability to stay in power. So they tried to stop us with violence and shady new requirements like literacy tests and poll taxes. We had to fight for nearly 100 years before the Voting Rights Act passed, which finally outlawed these dirty tricks. And you weren't the only ones that had to fight for your right to vote. Somehow women got left out and had to organize and fight state by state until we took our fight to Washington and finally got our right to vote all across the country. And even once the laws guaranteed every person the ability to vote, you still had to be 21 in most states. So when our government began drafting people under 21 to go fight in Vietnam, they realized their lives were at stake and they had no say. Young people all across the country rose up in protest and demanded that everyone over 18 should be allowed to vote. And since then, young people's votes have been crucial in deciding lots of big elections. Like in 2008, when a black candidate had a real chance to become president, young people showed up in record numbers. And 
every year, we make up a larger share of the voting population, giving young people more power, but only if we participate. So let me break it down. Together, there is so much we can decide, like whether or not we should go to war, or how we spend our money, and how we power our lives. We can determine who has the right to marry, and who has the right to choose, what possessions should be outlawed, and whether or not we should legalize. It's up to you to make your choices and shape our future. If we sit on the sidelines, then others will make it work for them instead of us. So let's make our voices heard. So what would it take for you to vote?